I know that we have members of AIPP joining us today, but I'm going to do a roll call of the Arts Commission members. So, Alex Hanna? Here. Alma Castro? Here. Exilda Trujillo de Martinez? Here. Andrea Hanley? Here. Adelma Hinasco? Here. Tamara Bates? Here. Jorge Luis Bernal? Here. And Bernadette Ortiz Pena is excused today, and that makes a quorum for today's meeting. Great. Um, and I would like to do, do a formal welcome to AIPP folks. It looks like we have mo almost all the committee here present, so I really appreciate your participation. Um, you know, normally, in, in a normal world, we have a whole process with AIPP looking at things, and then we look at things, but we have not been in much of a normal process of late, as you all know, so I'm glad we were able to have you all join um, and I appreciate uh, Pauline and Andrea and others who worked to make sure we could make that happen. Um, okay, approval of agenda. If you could all take a look at that, I'm gonna make some maneuvers on there, but if everyone can look. Um, one thing we do need to change under action items is we are not approving a temporary art installation right now. We are going to have a discussion and then a recommendation, potentially, on under action items, not an approval. So if we could change that. And then I would prefer to move matters from the public number six to immediately after the action items. Um, and then matters from the committee would come after matters from the public. Um, are there any other thoughts on that or recommendations on, on the agenda? If I could get a motion to approve that uh, amendment to the agenda. I shall move. Second? I second. Uh, I think I heard Adelma first. So, so Jorge uh, moved to approve that and Adelma seconded it. If you want to do a roll call, Armenia. Alex Hanna? Yes. Alma Castro? Yes. Exilda Trujillo de Martinez? Yes. Andrea Hanley? Yes. Adama Hinasco? Yes. Mara Bates? Yes. Thank you. And Jorge Bernal? Yes. And that motion carries. Great. Uh, Arts Commissioners, if you take a look at the minutes from January, Hard to believe it's almost June, and I guess our last meeting was January. Um, one question I have about this, it looks like they're not very detailed. Are they no longer so detailed because of the recordings? So they are not detailed so much because of the recordings and because things get entered into this new PrimeGov system a certain way, it kind of just gives you the bulk of what happened, what the motion was, and then if anything needs to go back, there is the recorded version. Okay. Uh, Arts Commissioners, if you could all take a look at those minutes and make sure at least the main points were there. Um, and I suppose if there's anything you're not sure about, we could go back and ask for the recording. But I don't believe there was anything super complex from that meeting in January. But just in case, please let me know, let us know now. Um, well, I mean, I, I'm just a little concerned that it's like discussion and update on chart. Like that's huge, but I guess if we have the recordings, then we're fine. Yeah, I would agree. It would be nice in a way to have some kind of transcript or something during approval. I don't know. Um, so unfortunately, we lost our stenographers. Um, those are only for the big item meetings, such as governing body, finance, um, and then the planning commission, I believe. So we do not have an official stenographer who can do the minutes for us. Um, so that's me now. I've taken kind of that role. The way PrimeGov does it, it's very simplified. Um, if anybody was to request like a formal request of that recording, we can send that to them and that would be through public, um, a public request, can't remember what the name is, but yes, you could do that through the city attorney's office. I take it, Armenia, once we go back to meeting in person, then we will have a stenographer then? No. Not necessarily. Don't believe so, unfortunately, because of um, cutbacks. That's one of the things that I believe the city clerk has taken. Okay. 
All right. Well, I, I, I would I would agree with Alma that it's a little it's a little bit disheartening not to have a little more uh, information there because I know when you're talking about something from four or five months ago, in this case, it might be nice to just get a link a link to the meeting. We could someone could go back and fast forward to that section. Um, but then in the in-person meetings, I think it's going to be problematic. So just for the record, I think we, we may want to be talking about that. Um, any other questions on those minutes? Um, all right, if I can have a motion to approve these as is. Don't move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Exilda. May I have a second? I'll second. i sorry, I missed who was that. Who was that? Hi, Alma. Oh, Alma. <laughs> she's going to second it, even though she's not totally convinced about these minutes. <laughs> um, but I appreciate that. Uh, let's go ahead and do a roll call to approve the minutes. Alex Hanna? Yes. Alma Castro? Yes. Exilda Trujillo de Martinez? Yes. Andrea Hanley? Yes. Adelma Hanasco? Yes. Tamara Bates? Yes. Jorge Bernal? Yes. And that motion carries. Great. Uh, I'd like to introduce everyone to Rich Brown. Uh, hi, Rich. Um, sorry to put you on the spot. But if you would, we just, I, we're used to Andrea being at these meetings, but we haven't seen you and it's great to have you here. Would you introduce yourself just briefly before we get going? Sure, thank you very much, Chairman Hanna. Um, hi, my name is Rich Brown. Uh, I'm the, the new Director of Community and Economic Development. I actually shouldn't say new, it's almost been a year, uh, but uh, I am now um, uh, leading a couple of departments that uh, uh, look and focus on uh, quality of life and um, increasing wealth for the community through uh, the residents, uh, tourists, and businesses of Santa Fe. And uh, my departments are uh, economic development, uh, land use, uh, tourism, arts and culture, and housing. So all those together, we try to synergize to figure out how we can, again, increase the quality of life uh, in the city, uh, but also looking at those audiences that I've mentioned earlier uh, as a part of my role. So I'm happy to be here today. I'm excited about uh, this happening. I, I uh, was going to send a note to Pauline that I'm going to try to figure out how we can bring the sonographer back uh, to this commission, uh, because I think the work that you're doing tonight is definitely something that we should memorialize in some way as we move it forward. <laughs> I will work on that once um, we finish this meeting. So I just wanted to, to pass that on. So, Great. Rich, thank you so much for being here. And considering the list you just read, uh, it's amazing you have time to be here. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate it quite a, quite a bit. Um, and one other thing I just want to mention before we get into the formal uh, agenda is just to thank, I just want to thank the staff, Pauline and the whole staff, for the Mayor's Arts Awards. I don't know if you, if all of you, I know some of you were able to tune in, and I just got, I heard back from a number of people feeling so thankful to be honored, um, and people that had nominated people, thankful that those people got honored. And so I know it was complex and difficult during the pandemic to pull off a Mayor's Arts Awards. And um, I, I'm just very thankful that we did pull it off. And I want to thank the staff at Pauline and, and her staff, uh, Armini and Rob, Rod, for further work on that. And um, Joe Abeda, of course, did, uh, was behind the scenes working hard. And Carlos Medina was, was really fun. And even Alma made a, a, a little cameo there to entertain us. So it was really nice. And I really appreciate everyone's work on that. All right, um, let's delve in. We've got, a, we've got a discussion item that Pauline's gonna talk about, and then we'll get into the, the meat of our meeting here. Pauline. Yes, sorry, thank you. We're having a, a link issue um, to the meeting on our prime guts. I was trying to oh. coordinate with the city team, so I apologize for that, it's getting fixed. Um, so it was brought to the mayor's attention and he shared it with me that it's, um, the 200 year anniversary of the Santa Fe Trail. Um, there was a, a um, constituent had seen an article in AAA Magazine and just reached out. Um, so I let the chair Alex Hanna know. And so we thought we would just bring it to you for to seed an idea. Um, there is a Santa Fe Trail Association that has a website um, to look at different things throughout the different states that the Santa Fe Trail went through. And so it's just to bring it 
to you, and I think um, Alex, you might have had some ideas um, for a discussion. But that's that's what I I know, and that's what we're just letting you all be advised of. And to clarify that the 200th anniversary of Santa Fe Trail is 2021. This year, correct. And did the mayor did the mayor indicate to you give you any indication of kind of what he thought it might look like? Um, no, it was, it was just a sharing. I'm sorry, uh, Chair Hannah. It was just a sharing of um, receiving. The mayor gives me a lot of things that are related to the arts and culture. So this was one of the things that came across my my desk. Mm -hmm. um, do any of the arts commissioners have any thoughts on this? Um, this? I don't think this would fall under art in public places at this stage. Uh, depending on what it is, but do any arts commissioners have any thoughts on um, how the city might memorialize the 200th anniversary of Santa Fe Trail? I would just encourage us to keep it in the larger context that we're all working within if we do choose to uh, focus attention on it. And if there is a question around funding, I think we definitely need to consider that carefully and seriously um, before we commit public funds for that commemoration. Great, thank you, Adelma. Any, anyone else, uh, any other arts commissioners wanna weigh in on this subject? I know there was some conversation about the sculpture that's at the entrance to Museum Hill, which does commemorate the Santa Fe Trail. And I don't know if that, I think believe that would be DCA, under DCA, the State Department of Cultural Affairs, uh, that property, if, if, I don't know how extensive, Pauline, you and you and your staff feel like you wanna get involved with this, but it may be a partner, you, maybe something you could partner with Department of Cultural Affairs, the state level. What are, what are, do you guys have any thoughts on the staff level about this? Um, Chair, we have actually not had this, um, on our calendar or as a priority right now, um, but it's something that if the Arts Commission is interested in looking at something um, along with the city, we can definitely reach out um, and definitely see what the Santa Fe Trail Association already has planned um, and see if that dovetails with anything else that perhaps us in the state would wanna do. But again, as Commissioner Stocko um, mentioned to keep it into context, um, so the Santa Fe Trail website does also acknowledge um, you know, the, the conflict of, and the things that happened along the trail. So they're not, they're really trying to look encompassing of things just based on their website. So we'll keep an open ear to things. Okay, that sounds good. I think just uh, report back uh, when you can, if anything comes up or if, the, if a decision is made to do anything, if we can support it. Um, I, I will say that, um, just one other update, as long as we're talking about the subject, that um, I'm part of a panel and we're interviewing three finalists for a city historian next week, which is great that the city historian position is coming back after a bit of a hiatus. And this may be something that we, you know, we mention the city historian and see what they, how they might contextualize it and uh, what they might want to do with that. That's just another thought on the subject. All right, anything else? Any other thoughts on Santa Fe Trail? All right, so the reason we're here um, is there's been quite a bit of discussion about, in the recent discussion about how to handle the box on the plaza. Um, and this would be a temporary measure because chart will be eventually tasked with um, coming up with some longer term solutions and, and uh, programming around uh, the site of the obelisk. Um, this is part of why I brought this, part of why I asked Art in Public Places uh, members to be here and I encourage you all to participate in this discussion is because in a normal situation, this should have come to you potentially a few months ago even um, because we've, we've known that we've had this box in the situation now basically since 
the winter over, you know, for months, basically. So in an ideal world, it would have gone to art in public places. You all would have had a discussion about it for a temporary measure. And then that would have come to us. Um, and then it would have gone up, up the chain of command. However, we're a week away from Memorial Day. And I think tourism and others are feeling like we have an ugly box on the plaza and they very much want to do something about it so that tourists aren't looking at an ugly box. However, as you all know, what's under the box is a little more complicated. Uh, and so I think that's part of why it's being brought to our attention. I want to just frame it this way. We could, as a group here, decide to not do anything um, and let let uh, public works, let um, parks, let the city beautify the box in some way um, and, and leave it at that. Or give, and, that, and I say that especially given the short notice, the short turnaround time and the, sh and the expectations. Or we could have a, a discussion about something more complex, something more engaging, uh, something more dynamic for that spot. Um, and so I think I, I want to start with that discussion first, basically a discussion about whether we want to have this discussion, because I'm not sure necessarily the Arts Commission does or does not want to make a recommendation uh, on this. So uh, I, I, I'm going to put it out to the floor to both AIPP members and Arts Commissioners, just raise your hand and I'll call on you for this discussion on the discussion uh, about Chair? what you think we should, what we'd like to do here. Chair, yes. before we start, can um, we just make an announcement to those members that are joining us from the public? I have some people that are raising their hands. Yeah. Um, if we wanna just mention that we have public comment that will be held after- After this action item. Yeah. After this action item. So just be patient with us, but we will get to you. Thank you, Armenia. And there's, is there, oh, I see, I can see attendees. I see we have about 13 attendees. Okay, that's great. I'm glad that folks are here. Um, so yeah, we, we will, we look forward to the public comment period after we have this discussion and everyone's thoughts uh, on this subject. But first I'd like to, to ask this group, basically, do we want, how do, do we want to handle this, this subject at all? Yeah, Delma. Um, I would love to jump in and just kind of pause and take us back a minute. One, thank you, Chair Hannah. Um, it's so good to see arts commissioners. I haven't seen you in four months. So even in this virtual realm, I love seeing you all. And I've actually never gotten to see all of you who serve on art in public places. And I just wanted to tell you how we know who you are, what an amazing force you are, um, the public service you're doing, the capacity, the talent that you all hold. And um, just want to thank you. And it's super exciting to be in this space with you. Um, and I also just want to name that we're like in this cyber world where we're sort of in no man's land or no woman's land. And, and I want to root us and remind us that uh, we are all here in Santa Fe, which is Tewa land. And um, be it that your ancestors are indigenous or you came 400 years, your ancestors came with the Spanish or you came later. Um, there are many waves of us. And I know that we share something common, which is that we love this place and we wanna do right by this place. And that means looking at past wrongs, looking at past harms and figuring out how creatively and collaboratively, hopefully we can move forward together because we love this place. So I just needed to name that and remind us that we are rooted in place, even though um, we're in cyberspace and remind us that we're, you know, we're talking about the plaza, which is the white shell water place, the pooge of the Tewa and um, honor that and give thanks for that. And with that, I just wanna say that um, I really hear you, Chair Hanna, that on one level, we're so excited that we've been asked to participate. Um, you as chair have been persistent, you've been patient, you've been tenacious, you've been a solid leader through wonky times. As you have Pauline, as you have Rich, I mean, it's it's been unusual and unprecedented. And with that, um, we are being asked to participate and yet we've got about a week to do so and um, it's tricky and it's complicated. So 
I could see us going down the path of, okay, let's brainstorm what we can do in a short period of time. And I could also see us saying, whoa, as these two groups, maybe we're not capable of that. Um, if we do choose to move forward, I do have two requests. One that we consider, and I've talked to others, this is not my idea. Um, Andrea Hanley has been incredible in reminding us of this, that whatever we do, I and we feel strongly that there needs to be some signage, some statement of what is happening on the plaza, why this is happening, what this means. To just have a piece of plywood hiding, that's not how we are, it's not who we are. Let's look at this, let's name it. And even if it's just a signpost or some signage saying, we are working on this and here's the chart process and, and an exciting celebration of what we're doing and it takes time. So number one, some sort of signage acknowledgement of what's going on instead of just hiding it, let's name it. And then to some sort of engagement that obviously will grow with chart, but some capacity right now on the plaza for people to be able to submit an idea, a prayer, a remembrance of frustration, whatever it is and whatever that looks like. So those would be the two pieces that I would encourage us to consider. Thank you. Thank you, Adoma. That's wonderful. And thank you for reminding us uh, about where we are. And, and just to be clear that even if we say, let's let parks make, a make the box prettier, we still would recommend signage and engagement, correct? Okay, great. Jorge? Yeah, hi. Um, on the coattails of what Adema just said, I, uh, I'm also part of the Art and Public Place Committee, and we had an interesting, uh, uh, our last meeting was very, very kind of a, uh, tense, I felt, uh, because of the uh, lack of participation in our part. Um, I've been reflecting on that since then. I want to do a survey of the Art and Public Places uh, uh, committee members and Andrea wrote a letter to the mayor. Uh, that led me to, to really think hard about this uh, and to think, uh, uh, Alex, that we, we are not, but we're not, I'm not, I'm not a, an elected official. I am here at the pleasure of the mayor. And, and it's hard to come to terms with that. And uh, because we all have an opinion. I don't have the answer for the plaza. You know, I have ideas and opinions, no answers. And I love that uh, since my daughter said it to me many years ago. So, you know, I think uh, Pauline and the staff we have, uh, and then Rick, I'm sure, they can come up with ideas of what we should do. I don't think it's up to us to give an answer, but to provide counseling or to support the staff's meeting and the wonderful work they do and see, you know, if we agree or not and give our comments and not you know, take opposing sides or create more stress than they already have. Uh, bottom line to me, you know, I said, you know, it's not up to me to decide, I'm not representing the community. I'm just a volunteer uh, interested in what's going on in my city and I wanna make things, make things go well. And I think we all agree with me. Uh, I just wanna say, get that across, get it on my chest because I've been really thinking about this since our, our Art in Public Places meeting. And I thought, you know, I had to say this. Um, so I'm just waiting to see what Pauline knows and how they, uh, if they have any ideas of what, you know, they come up with uh, as far as the solution. And lastly, you know, uh, uh, Pauline, I think it was maybe two years ago uh, when I was there a year, almost two years ago, before the, way before the pandemic, that I stood at the plaza with Rod and her, a couple of people, you know, handing out, we were, you know, gluing pieces of paper with people coming up with ideas on the, on the plywood. And, and we all had, yes, we have many people show up, I mean, to, to do this thing. Not as many as we wanted to, but we had a lot of people. And I always thought something's gonna come out of it. But because of the pandemic and everything that's going on and the different sides of the politics behind this has been postponed. I just hope we come up with an idea that we can all agree and support. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Yes, uh, I saw Andrea's hand first. So I'm gonna go her and then Alma next. Hi, I just want to reiterate what, what everyone else has said and, and basically that as a chair of the Art and Public Places um, Committee that the committee again is at, um, here at the pleasure of the, of the mayor. We, we've been appointed to serve as advisors to the city and we all have a deep and ongoing experience in the arts here and across the country and we are, serve as volunteers unpaid and all professionals in the field. And so the expertise in this committee, um, which includes current and recent um, representatives of Axel Contemporary, 
um, cites Santa Fe, the Wheelwright Museum, the CCA, the Center, Southwest Contemporary, and Meow Wolf, among others, is really a complement to the Arts Commission. And we serve as part of our civic duty. And so I, I very much hope that we um, will be heard um, and this committee will be heard and, and the good and amazing work that, that happens um, in, in that way. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair, for letting me just say that. Thank you. Uh, Alma. Okay, um, I'll try to be brief. Um, this situation is super difficult. Um, really triggering. I've spent the last hour just walking around the box and trying to figure out what it means. Um, I think we all know that growing up in Santa Fe, the plaza represents a lot of things and can be from hostile to welcoming to a place that creates memories to a place that can be really hurtful for some really difficult things. Um, that being said, we have an opportunity and a responsibility as a council as a representative of a sliver of the community, you know, I definitely feel like we each are supposed to be representing sectors of our community that we said we would. When we showed interest in this committee, when we applied, we said that we were gonna represent our city. And if we don't say something, then we are not taking that opportunity. Great, very, thank you so much, Alma. Yes, uh, Angie. Um, I agree with all of the commissioners um, that I, I absolutely think that whatever happens with the, the box or the obelisk you know, remains has to reflect the conflict that is contained within the box because we cannot endorse the erasure of history that is very damaging to this community, um, to the city, to everyone involved. Even if there's painful memories, um, you know, great memories, all of that is tied up within that. So however we think about this beautifying project as it's framed, you know, as a tourism issue, uh, it cannot be something that erases what is contained within that box. So that is my recommendation is to really think about that. Um, I think this is very short notice to come up with ideas. Um, I do think that we can maybe try to think about a process. You know, whatever idea gets approved, there should be some kind of process. Um, so, you know, really it should be approved by different members of the the commissioners of AIPP um, that these thoughts can go into that just because I, I think that, you know, we had all made this recommendation, you know, again, I, I know, I understand there's the pandemic, but many of us came forward when there was starting to be conflict around the obelisk that we felt that there was going to be um, violence and potential damage. And we were very worried about this. And I think that this is another scenario where whatever we do could incite more violence if we're not very careful. So I actually think this is a very um, sensitive issue and it's very difficult to come up with something within a week. So I guess I would like us to maybe shift the conversation to what we want the process to be. Thank you, thank you, Angie. Exilda. I have uh, so many thoughts. <laughs> and feelings and emotions about this and, and I try to simplify it because I know this is a temporary assignment that we are gonna sort of take on. I, 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 I did think that the editorial in the New Mexican today talked about um, maybe putting a native plants or flowers all around, something beautiful, something simple, beautiful, I do agree that there should be a place where there is a statement about what occurred, and but we've got to be careful. Words are very critical here now. And we have to be careful how, of course, somebody could write this up and all of that. I, being an educator and also because I had a big family, I feel that the youth here needs to be, we need to tap that somehow maybe 
having, um, but I don't know if we have time to do that, having our, um, our poet, youth poet laureate and, and maybe our regular poet, you know, adult poet laureate, write, uh, publish some poems that we could either, I don't know if, how we post them or put them up uh, onto the box or how that I will, or, or a recording. I don't know if that's too complex. Uh, but I, I, I do feel that we need to, uh, you know, put something beautiful, poetry, maybe music. I don't know how that all would come together, but, uh, and, and, and also maybe, uh, you know, we, we would have a beautiful landscape vertically and horizontally around uh, the obelisk and the box and, 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 and do something that way. Um, also, uh, maybe uh, I had another idea about um, having old photographs or old memories of Santa Fe, the way, because people take a lot of pleasure in remembering what Santa Fe looked like all through the years, how this beautiful city of ours came to be, how it grew and how it changed and everything. And people have um, a lot to say about that, especially people that were born and raised here. And so, uh, that that is just my input is that i i would like to get to keep it simple to keep it beautiful artistic of course we're the arts commission cultural because we are the arts and cultural commission mm -hmm. so anything that uh, that comes our way as far as suggestions to me I, I you know of course we need to talk about thank you Exodia. that was great thank you very much um, I get this sense, and I don't want to cut anyone off because I think maybe we can just move to the next point of the discussion, which is from what I'm hearing that we do want to, we don't want to punt, basically. We do want to take this on to some degree as long as we can do it in a process that we feel comfortable with. Um, if everyone agrees, I'm happy to then move on to a more formal discussion uh, that Exilda has sort of already begun, which is, well, what would that look like? And to be clear, to be really clear about this, we're talking about a temporary measure to last basically to summer. CHART will take this process over. CHART um, has begun, the process has begun, someone has been, the facilitators are in the process, I believe, of being hired and that will happen. So we're talking about a temporary measure and we're talking about making some recommendations to the city about what we think um, could happen. So that, that means we can make more than one recommendation. So for example, Exilda, we could take like the, the article, the, the opinion piece in today's newspaper said, let's make, a, let's make the box flowers or native plants or whatever that is. And, and some signage, and that's one of our recommendations. And then we as a group right now could come up with another recommendation or a third, and, and or a third recommendation. So, um, and, and I think in any case, which e with each of those recommendations to Angie's point and everyone's point really, that each of those would have a process that we would recommend as part of the recommendation. Um, does that, does anybody have any questions about that or other thoughts about that process? Do we uh, feel like our uh, part in this is kind of a stepping stone to chart? I mean that this, this is the initial, initial idea process that would move up to chart. Is that what we're sort of our role is now? Pauline, if we, would, take, if we take it on. Pauline, would you like to weigh in on that? Your sense of why we've been asked to be here is that is Exilda's characterization correct in your opinion? I think it's a little bit of both, Chair and um, Commissioner Trujillo. I want it summer, and we're coming out of the pandemic very strong, more strong, more strongly than we anticipated. And the chart procurement process is taking longer than anyone anticipated. And so they probably will, the consultant team probably will not be on board for another two months. Um, so that's why the temporary art is sort of that bridge of 
instead of having, you know, I think right now there's evergreen shrubs in a white box. So how do we do something to beautify the area, but knowing that there are, it's like everyone has mentioned here, there are deeper issues. And through the chart process with the consulting team, those convenings and those conversations um, will begin to happen, hopefully sometime in summer. Great. Um, so, given, so given those sort of parameters, and you can, I think you can understand why I wanted to see if we wanted to take this on. I don't want, I don't want this whole commission and, uh, commission and the AIPP members to be sort of set up for failure. I mean, I think, I think it's, a, it's, it, it, it's something that worries me because, you know, we've been asked, we've been involved or been asking to be involved for a year or so on this process. And so all of a sudden we want to, we're asked to kind of rush through uh, something. However, we have an amazing group here. And so I feel like if we do feel like we can make a recommendation on something that will work for the summer um, and be engaging for both locals and tourists and explain situation, um, I, I, think we, I think that's something we should proceed on if, if everyone agrees. Any other? I, I yeah, Alex, go ahead, I, I totally, I totally agree. And as, as you and I discussed, I, I feel like whatever direction we go in and Adelma, you know, reiterating this earlier is my, my um, deep concern that we do have um, di a didactic panels that sit there and talk about, you know, what, what this is, whether it's a collaborative vision um, between um, the different and diverse communities of, of um, this land um, and we talk about, you know, and, and think about ways that, that talk about um, transformation or we talk about, um, as a Navajo, I like to use the word emerging. Um, and so there's a lot of different kinds of things that I think we can do, but I really do feel as though we need to really focus in on who is making those statements, who is writing that information. Um, I think we need to think about um, what that means and, and how that information is gathered, but I do think that having information, having panels, having something that discusses um, what is happening in this area um, or happening on the plaza and, and did happen um, at the plaza is incredibly important in terms of the history of, of this place and our role in making sure that people understand why there are so many communities who are so upset about this, this particular uh, monument and all the monuments that um, are offensive um, to, to Native people. I think it's important um, just in terms of, of uh, how we move forward and, you know, and how we re reconcile and, 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 and heal in a way. But I, I do think that we need to do this in a very, um, uh, we, we need process in, is what Angie said. And I think that that's very important. And I think that we don't have a lot of time. And so I feel as though um, that's, a, that's a huge, that's a huge issue because most of the time when people have projects that are as important as these are, you have time. So anyway, that's just my, my point. And I, and I like all the ideas that we've been coming up with. Um, there was one that I had thought about, and I'm not sure if I should bring it up now, but I was sort of thinking about Adobe and um, what that meant and looking at that square box and the possibility of, of mudding that area as a community gesture. Now that all of us are together, could it be something where the community comes together um, with two, with um, you know, people who lead the process of creating um, an adobe structure in in the mall um, or in the plaza. Um, there, you know, there are so many different ideas that we could continue. I could continue to talk about, but I'm just saying that there there has to be a way of community uh, engagement as well as a reflection of of what this is and and how people um, put their two cents in or those people give their blessings or their their prayers or their comments about you know, this process, but the, I think the overall thing, I think it, that is so important is narrative um, and, and story and that um, people need to understand um, both tourists and visitors, you know, what this means and, and how it moves forward. So what I, what I might recommend, um, and then I'll, we'll, we'll jump around to everyone, don't worry. Um, what I might recommend here is we, we do this as a two-part process. So we have our idea, first our idea of sort of what it looks like and then and we decide on which of those ideas we want to recommend and then we'll go back to each of those ideas 
and discuss the process for the narrative that goes with that idea. How does that sound? So, so far I've heard two ideas. One for the look of it. One is the idea that's already been out there in the public realm, which is the sort of plant, veg vegetative, you know, continue to look with the trees and make it more green and then some signage to go with it. Uh, and then I have Andrea's idea of an Adobe community project building an Adobe idea. And then we could go back to that and say, well, what does that look like in terms of a narrative? Um, I know some ideas of, that have been circulating around is, you know, putting, putting uh, thoughts or recommendations or things into the wall, say, you know, that those are, those are other ideas we could have. But let's circle back to all those, I, to those with process after we flesh out all the ideas of what it might look like. And let's remember too that we're on a budget. Um, you know, and, and so, and Pauline, I'll probably ask Pauline to chime in and say, well, that all sounds great, but no, we can't do the gold-plated thing because we don't have the budget. So, so that'll be a part of the process too. So in addition to the floral wall, the Adobe walls, uh, what are some other thoughts? And feel free to chime in and Circle me back around if you if you don't like the way I'm leading this discussion. Uh, I'm going to go to Angie and then Alma. Angie. Um, so I, yeah, I really love what Andrea was saying about the story and narrative, um, and how I'm I think about that too is the timeline. Um, so really thinking about history, and I do think that we have an opportunity here with having four walls and a mm -hmm. circular. Um, path of movement around this object. Um, this is, so this idea is more, I mean, I guess what I'm more interested in is, is trying to express this timeline of the various um, roles that the plaza has taken throughout history. So, you know, before the obelisk was even there, what was the role that this place took? Then once it was there, why? what was happening there. So this could be expressed through images. We pasted large scale images on each, um, each side of the wall to the final image, which again completes the trajectory of the obelisk coming down. Um, that could be an interesting way to tell this story through a timeline. Um, but even if it's not through images, I think it would be very nice to have a timeline of, of the, the role that the plaza took throughout time. I think that's very well put, Angie. Thank you so much. And maybe something, maybe one of those panels is actually future. Right. Um, great. Thank you, Angie. That's that's a great, great idea. Uh, Exilda I, and then Alma. <laughs> Go ahead, Exilda. I, I, I just want to uh, maybe uh, put this in here now before we go any further that I think we, uh, we don't want to uh, bite off more than we can chew. You know what I mean? If there's, it's so complex, this whole history of, of this whole world that we live in, and especially in this beautiful place. But I, I think we, we need to concentrate on what happened with the obelisk. And I, that's what I feel. And that um, we tell that story, but not go so way out there. It's going to be too much. We don't have time. And I think we ought to concentrate on that one, on the plaza, and what that obelisk, obelisk meant, and why it uh, maybe why uh, we've come to this, why it was, you know, destroyed or brought down in some way. But it's got to be a positive, more, I think, peaceful, uh, you know, feeling. Because if we start with a lot of little ideas about you know, history and culture and spreading it way out, we're going to run into a lot of conflict, I feel, because people have their ideas, they have their emotions. And so I think we need to be reminded, and then we don't have time to do a big project. That's why I, I'm saying this, that we should maybe keep it simple and keep it directed pointedly at this monument. It's and, I completely agree with you. I think that we have four sides to the, to the obelisk and that we could look at, you know, um, language that surrounds those four directions. 
um, as well as a, as a guide of how much um, story we can actually tell. I think that's true. I will also say that I think that we will come up against conflict no matter what we do. That, yes, well, both Exilda and Angie, both points well made. Matthew has got that little quiet hand, but wait, but wait, I'm going to Alma first and then I'm gonna go over to Matthew. Alma, go ahead. Cool, so I think I had a clarifying question. There yeah. is still a uh, time capsule inside that box, correct? Inside the obelisk uh, housing, is inside that the right? Bank? I believe so. There's documentation um, that there is a time capsule underneath the base. I mean, it might be sort of cathartic and sort of healing for the community to have an event around opening that time capsule. I don't know if there was a time frame that we were supposed to do that or if we're saving it for any time, but it's already been taken down. We might as well open it. <laughs> I don't know where it is in there. I don't know that much about it. That's a, Alma, thank you for bringing up a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that could be part of the programming if it's feasible. I don't know where it is or how it would be done. Um, but thank you for bringing it up. Um, Matthew, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, given that what's going on and the difficulty of reactions that we expect to doing anything. Um, I think history and truth is more important than beautification. I also think that tourists come to Santa Fe because of our deep history and our deep engagement with history and our willingness to talk about our history and our culture. And by putting information so my, so that's sort of the preamble. So what I'm thinking as a project is to perhaps use the box as it is and cover it with articles in the press that have been written since it was torn down for the past year, two years, 30 years, maybe articles about the obelisk from 100 years ago, photos, um, Angie's timeline, to to do as little interpretation as we can do and just present as much information as we can find that other people have created. And as part of that, possibly to have a section, have a way that people, the public can make comments and have their voices heard. Maybe through a website, they can type a comment, email it somewhere, something like that that then we print out and put up, you know, once a week or once a month or something like that. So there is some preliminary public engagement that then can be turned over to the chart process as that begins. I love the meta vibe, Matthew. That's awesome. Um. <laughs> Can I just also say thank you? I love it. And I, you bring something up, Matthew, that I know we all know, but we haven't named tonight, which is that this is happening around the world. It looks different in every city and every country, but this same conversation in different iterations is coming up. And you saying that people come to Santa Fe for the history and because we dare to be different and talk and ask questions. And so thank you for naming that. And also I really value that you're saying it's not our job to be interpreting, but to provide the information. And I think if there were a way that we could bring those uh, articles to a size where we could see them um, from a little bit a ways, it actually is a bit of a timeline that then culminates in what we're doing now and how chart is going to take us forward and we're having the messy nuanced complex collaborative conversations and we're not there yet but we're starting the process so i just really appreciate what you said thanks great um matthew take your hand down unless you're ready to comment again <laughs> i thought um, it was an art installation in your in your studio <laughs> Other, uh, other ideas, other ideas about how this might look um, that we haven't talked about and then, and then I'm happy to sort of dig into uh, the, the process um, piece and, and which pieces we want to recommend. Yes, Jorge. Um, I mean, pretty much what everything I said, I'm, I'm thinking of how to, in the short time frame we have, how can we can create, you know, this narrative, this, 
the symbolism, what the plus that has become to me. And I'm thinking we have a box there, maybe making it taller. But if we have a box or like, like Andrea mentioned, that has Adobe, which is so, so close to us, you know, the, the, the architecture, the mud building. And maybe, you know, I'm thinking, you know, we're still standing and maybe covered with holes. I'm watching, you know, we're watching the news, what's happened in Israel, the bombings. It's like, like you know, Adema was saying, this is going around, whether it's religious, whether it's, you know, ethnic cleanse, whatever it may be, there's fight everywhere. And I'm thinking something so simple to erect a structure that is holes that maybe you can see through and see sky that gives, gives us hope that we can see through, but we're still standing. So and it's, I, don't, I don't think it would cost very much to do something like this. And I don't want to provide the answer. It's just an idea of how we can materialize and come to terms with something that really means something that's going to be changing in, in, in a short time, once sharks take over. But those are my, my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Um, Tamara, I hate to be that teacher in school that calls on people, but I'd love to get your thoughts and then Taryn as well. Um, just weigh in, even if you just say you love everything you've heard. Just, uh, I, I just want to hear your voices. Well, thank you. I, I think, I'm not sure if it's because I came on to the Arts Commission at COVID and we never really got to meet in person, but I've just found my experience as an arts commissioner to be one where I'm confused a lot and I don't understand the conversations that have happened before we're called together, what I'm supposed to weigh in on when we are together, and then I have no idea what happens most of the time after. So I actually don't have, I, I don't know how to weigh in. You know, I mean, I, I don't even know why we're being asked to, again, we keep being asked to weigh in and I don't know what happens with our comments kind of go into a void is what it's felt like. And that could be COVID, that could be government, I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I and, and my apologies for whatever role I've played in not bringing you in enough. Um, I feel bad for the, the pandemic commissioners, Alma and Tamara. And, um, I, I think you're, we're hearing what you're saying. And um, I, I think the process has gone off the rails a few times in this last year. And so hopefully we can get it back on the rails and um, we appreciate your being present. And, and I know you've served on a number of panels uh, to help choose for grants and other things. So um, hang in there, I guess, as, as best you can. Um, but, but thank you uh, for that comment. Um, Taryn, do you have any uh, thoughts about, about this? Yeah, no, I just agree um, that with Angie, that it is, you know, a very sensitive issue and short time to come up with these ideas on how to sort of, I guess the word that is being used, beautify it. Um, to me, it's, it has gotten worse with this box around it. Um, it's just hiding, to me, a symbol of hate, a symbol of murder, theft. I know it's very sensitive in terms of the arguments that are being presented from both, from various sides. Um, but maybe, you know, I think I agree that there should be some type of signage, at least, with what's happening with the city. I know the Arts com um, Art in Public Places Committee, we felt left in the dark. And I, I assume the Arts Commission commissioners have also felt the same way with, with all of the art in public places in Santa Fe and just the art in general. And this has been a, a big issue. You know, during the pandemic, we saw this happen, we saw it get taken down and then boxed up and tried to put art on it. And, you know, there was an article that came out calling art washing it. I, you know, I have to agree with that, that that's what this feels like. But, and I, I, I wonder what chart, you know, what their role is going to be with this monument once they do take over and once it does get um, rolling in two months, um, you know, how many people will make that up? Uh, I've had a lot of questions about what, what that is going to look like, what the process of that is. But I do agree there needs to be a process with this temporary art installation, whether 
I mean, if it's going to be plants and flowers, is that what the budget would go towards? If it's going to be a call for art, does that budget go to those artists to complete this? Um, you know, there are four sides to work with. Maybe there's, I like the idea of what Matthew said of having, just providing the information, these past articles, past um, everyone's opinions, you know, in a sense, to give the fuller picture of what's going on and then also what the city is doing currently. You know, I know we're coming out of the pandemic, everything is really slow process, so I definitely um, understand that. And I just, I think that those are some of my ideas on this. Um, at times it does get confusing and I feel like, yeah, like what Tamara said, you know, I'm just, I'm not sure how to provide any input on some stuff, but that's, that's, that's where I'm at. I think I like Andrea's idea of the Adobe as well. Um, that was something that interested me and in terms of architecture brings us all together here in Santa Fe. Um, so I think that's something that could, and food, you know, I don't know what type of, what that could look like, but food is always a great <laughs> Thing to bring everyone together across cultures so great so an adobe navajo taco stand <laughs> <laughs> taryn thank you um thank you for that um any anyone else want to weigh in on sort of the various ideas and then maybe we can start to narrow down what we want to recommend um i have one thing to add which is I do also like Andrea's Adobe idea um, that obviously allows for a lot less information on the structure. Um, but I, what I was thinking is with either of these, um, having windows through the structure to see the remnants of the obelisk that are in there um, might feel less like we're covering up some problem. I, I agree with that, and there's examples of this throughout the world, um, of especially in areas where, you know, there's war damage, you know, there's like that in Berlin, I can't remember the building, but it's this large tower where they, they just left the top knocked off, and it looks like you're in a war zone, and that's to remember um, what happened, and I think that's very important. Matthew, I think that I think that's a great idea. I know uh, others have circulated the idea of of the whole thing being transparent, the whole box being transparent. Um, I don't know that may be beyond the budget, but I mean, if I think if people love the Adobe idea, then I think that would be interesting to have four windows uh, on each of the sides that look in. It would still be protected in the sense that there's a structure around it but you would see the remains of the obelisk then. Correct, is that what you're envisioning in terms of the windows? Yes, exactly. And it could be four or it could be one. I mean, it doesn't, yeah. Depending on the- right. right, and they could have glass or plexiglass or they could be just open. Either one of those could work. Great. Other, other thoughts? Oh, Alma, now she's got, you had both the real hand and the fake hand. Go ahead, Alma. Um, sorry, just to kind of follow up, I think that's a great idea um, to kind of honor the commenter. We don't want to cover things up. There's really great examples, like in Mexico City, where they built churches over pyramids. And so there's like windows where you could see the structures that are beneath. Um, but definitely, we don't want to whitewash things. We want to honor the reason that that obelisk came down. Thank you, Alma. Um, any, anyone else? Any other thoughts? I guess the question then, oh, go ahead, Adelma. I was just going to riff a little more if we do, if the Adobe idea takes form, there's an uh, opportunity to collect dirt from a lot of different places in this region that then becomes inclusive, representative, and um, of many places we come together. Uh, and hopefully we're building bridges and and doing some healing as we move forward. But there's there's some metaphor and symbol that could be um, could be there. Great. I totally agree with that in, in terms of, I mean, metaphor in terms of who the team is. It's not it's not Angie and I like bring in dirt over there. This is a this would be a selection of of people who would 
you know, take leadership in, in terms of, of how that mud is mixed and who those people are in terms of um, building or creating the Adobe and then, you know, um, leading the team or, or leading the community and, and building or whatever, whatever, whatever we decide to do. I'm just saying there needs to be that, that team that's decided. Community, community involvement. Exactly. Andrea, are you proposing that um, the public could bring their own, um, their own earth? Like, could that could be an open call thing? Is that what you're saying or? No, I'm saying that there needs to be leadership in terms of, of, of who, who's building the Adobe. And if the, maybe that's um, the, the only person that comes to mind right now is uh, Nora Naraha Morris, who has done a lot of this type of thing. And, and then possibly um, in, the, in the way that Adelma had talked about um, maybe specific people, specific um, um, earth from different places be brought into this kind of, you know, um, process um, and you know that team decides how that all works and with Pauline and and her crew if that makes sense but what I'm saying is that the, the, that this team that we have then would bring the community in to to actually mud in some places or whatever that whatever they deem is the next step in terms of of, of um, creating this, this, this temporary um, piece. Actually making the bricks, right? I mean, I know I've worked with Cornerstones uh, in the past, which is a great organization to actually make mud bricks, which is actually a really pretty, pretty fun activity. So I'm sure there's lots of programming we can do around it. Exactly, that's, that's exactly what I mean. And, um, and we have two weeks. I mean, I I'm <laughs> Well, the thing is, I think that I think the important thing to think about there, Adelma, I mean, I agree, it's, it's obviously a quick turnaround, but if it's a process piece, to the extent that it's secured in some way, but it's a process piece, I think it could be very engaging, even if it's going well into the summer. Yeah, and that's where I'm pushing back a little. Maybe there's a hybrid of what I'm thinking Angie might have been getting at and what you're proposing, Andrea, both of which I love, but perhaps it's an artist and a call to the community of you can drop your adobe off at this time and it will be part of what's growing in that's the great plaza yeah i it, think it, um i i think it includes the t um the you know the city architect you know it, it includes an artist it includes you know there's a there's a number of people i think that need to be involved in that process artists definitely architect you know pauline oh. the whole group so before we delve into too much too much detail on this Am I, do, I have a, do I have a sense that we have two recommendations we'd like to make? One would be this Adobe idea and the other would be the press clippings from all of his, from the history to all the way to the very present idea. Do we both, do we all agree that we like both of those ideas or do we only want to recommend? And then there's a third idea of just the beautification with the flowers. Do we, maybe we should start there. Do we even want to recommend that idea? Could we do a, a something in combination with either two or three? I mean, instead of just one idea, Perhaps, yes. two ideas would be better, or three, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think we could recommend more. We certainly can rec recommend more than one. I think the question is, does this group as a whole, I, I mean, I think the, the flower plant idea is already out there. Um, do we want to make that a formal recommendation by this group or just let that be out there if the city decides they want to do that? I would recommend that. I would, Alma, sorry, I, I think Alma was going to talk and then Adelma. No, go ahead, Adelma. I was just going to say, if we recommend that, that parks, the parks division carry forward in the way they already do beautifully with the plaza, let them do the work they do well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, my concern is if we put that as one of our recommendations, that that'll likely be chosen and then we'll have condoned that, which I think most of us don't want to do. If yeah, I think there may be, I think there may be mixed feelings. I think Exilda doesn't mind that idea. And I don't know about Jorge. I mean, we no, can not at all. I mean, we have to work together and bring our idea. That's what we're here for. But uh, I do feel that. We need to pay attention to some of the press that comes out too. And today I think a lot of people like that idea. As yeah. far as because I, I I you know I made a few contacts because I was trying to figure out what's our idea. 
and they love mm -hmm. that idea about the flowers that, or that more of the native plants and not cluttery and gaudy or, you know, but uh, they like the plaza so much with those beautiful, uh, the way the plaza uh, project is with those beautiful hanging baskets. I mean, that's an outstanding feature of the plaza right now. And people really think that's a, a very wonderful addition to the plaza. And that just, that came late, you know, that hasn't been going on for centuries. Right. Um, well, we can, and, and the way this is gonna have to work is with the arts commissioners will we'll formally vote on what we wanna do. Uh, arts and public places folks, um, unfortunately can't vote on that. Um, however, I think your input has been incredibly valuable today. Um, before, maybe before we delve into this, Pauline, would you give your thoughts a little bit about You've heard these, there's basically three ideas of which we'll recommend some, one, one two, or three, or all three. Um, the, the, I think putting the press clippings on would be pre pretty straightforward. Um, the Adobe building with windows obviously is a lot more complex. And then obviously if we just turned it over to parks and said, do your plants, that would be very, quite simple. Do you have any thoughts in terms of your point of view uh, for the department and the staff in terms of cost and implementation. Do you have any concerns at this juncture based on this conversation? Uh, no, because I think we'll be working internally with our city sister departments um, to implement anything, but I do encourage with the recommendations um, that as many of you stated that there be a process. And so what does that mean? And especially around if you're having didactic material, um, having some guidance from this, from you, the brain trust about who is the best um, folks to write that because we're going to need assistance with that. So I definitely want to urge the, the process and then also to encourage some ideas for programming. Like I, I know we don't want to just put something out there um, without some programming. And then knowing that when the chart consultant team has gone through the finalized procurement process and have a signed executed contract, that then this will dovetail with them and will provide information to them. Part of their scope of work, oh, excuse me, um, besides the community convenings, also entails artist activations throughout the city, so not just the plaza, and then also a cultural history series that they'll, um, you know, we're encouraging our city historian um, to also be involved with. So I think there's overlap, but I feel pretty confident that we'll figure it out financially. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great. To going to the Adobe, the Adobe wall uh, idea, what was the thought? Obviously, there's built-in programming in the sense of building it, right? But in terms of information, what is this thing? If you're a tourist that's never been to Santa Fe and you walk up and you see this structure, what are the thoughts? Is that to do a general plaque or is there some other thoughts about, about that information? I, think I, 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 I still think we need to include, you know, in from, um, a statement as we've, we've said throughout this entire process that every, any of the projects that we select need to have um, a statement clarifying why, um, you know, the obelisk has gone, has, has, you know, gone away and the history and what have you, however we're going to do this. So that language, regardless of what project um, we do, has to be there. So I don't think, I think that that's like the constant in, in what, um, whatever gets chosen needs to be there that explains why this, this structure is here and why this offensive monument is gone. Andrea, what is your recommendation for any of our, for any of the projects in terms of the writing? What is your recommendation for how we arrive at that text? I think that it, it looks to leadership. I think it looks to, to leadership, um, both with um, native tribes, or, um, native uh, or pueblos in this area, um, to Hispanic um, leadership. Um, I think that the mayor maybe needs to have something in there. The, the new historian that you're looking at, Alex, I think is really um, important. I also think that we could look to the brain trust of, um, the brain trust of, of museums um, in Santa Fe for possible help in, in, in putting together language. I mean, that's what, that's what curators do. 
Um, so I think that being able to kind of look at that um, might be a way that we could we could get information and and maybe the historian is someone who plays a, a, a big role in, in gathering that information. I don't know, Alex, you tell me. Well, uh, my understanding from Pauline in an earlier discussion is that person may not be officially uh, on board as a historian until July 1. However, okay. we may know who it is ahead of time and they may want to be involved. But, I, but what I'm gathering is uh, obviously getting a wide range of diverse views but maybe there's a neutral histor historian type figure that's the point person for gathering that information. Is that, with, is that, is that a possible way to go about it? I um, think I think so. Yeah, uh, I think so. It could also be um, potentially a collection of quotes from oh, members of the community because then we don't, it's not this like invisible voice. There's a name to those voices. So that's right. a possibility as well. Okay. Yeah, I think regardless, you would have anybody that was involved, I think their names would be on there, right? If you had Pueblo, Pueblo leadership, if you had Hispanic leadership and you have the mayor, or city historian mm -hmm. or state historian or whoever, I think their names would be there regardless. But I like the quote idea too. Uh, Alma, go ahead. Um, so I just, want to real quickly touch base. Um, none of our proposals are suggesting that we actually remove the monument, which is a problem to begin with. Um, so I kind of want to leave that open as an option. And I really want to hear from public comment before we decide anything. Yeah, I'm willing to, I'm willing to, to do public comments now and then circle back around. Um, I know people are messaging in. Uh, to be clear, my understanding is that, unfortunately, no, it, it cannot be, or forget unfortunately, it cannot be completely removed right now without charts, without charts input. Um, Chair? Yeah. Chair, if I could just ask, and I don't know, um, the chat function is not supposed to be on here, and I'm sorry that that was not disabled prior to the meeting. That's okay. Um, but we cannot address the chats they, if they would like to speak on that, they can speak now during public comment, but we cannot address the chats because the public cannot see what's in that chat. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, Adelma. I just, again, I love this brainstorming and I know that our goal tonight is to make a recommendation for a temporary project that will last a couple of weeks that will get us moving towards the larger chart, which is going to address these bigger issues. Mm -hmm. and with a $5,000 budget, a couple weeks in the busiest time of year, I really encourage us to simplify this recommendation and know that it may be that this beautiful Adobe project is something that Chart actually helps with. And mm -hmm. that actually what maybe we're doing is just quotes and the press and articles that have been about what's happened here four windows into the existing plywood to see into what is behind it and some timeline or uh, indicator of chart and what is happening next with our goal of cross-cultural understanding, racial equity, healing, and reconciliation in our community. And that language already exists in the chart RFP, and that can be, I think, pretty quickly put into signage. So forgive me for being uh, the party pooper here, but this is a big ongoing that's why you are an arts commissioner, Adelma, because you're so I, reining, us, reining us in. Vice chair, reining us in. I love it. So um, I encourage a very simple recommendation. Yeah, and I, I will say uh, there is there is language about what chart is, which actually does serve some basic uh, purpose around. I, I don't know uh, if it's something. I think it's actually something we all can see. I know Ar Armenia is going to yell at me. But I'm going to put this, um, if I can put this in chat, or I can just do a dramatic reading of it. Um, she's like, don't put it in chat. You're on mute. I can't hear you, Armenia. <laughs> please, please don't use the chat because those, these will not yeah, be saved finish. and they can't be public. I'm sorry. I'll just say the, the language around Sharp that Adelma is mentioning is very general and encompassing and I think was was written purposely for that for that um if if they I would like if they would like they can state their questions or their comments during public comment but the chat function cannot be saved so yeah, we no, can't I got you I got you Armenia I got it I got it 
I got it. Um, okay, so I, Adelma, I would say I really think where you're going with this is good. I, I, as much as I love the more complex project, I do think we could recommend it to, to chart, right? Because it's actually kind of awesome, right? But I, I, I don't know. I agree that I don't know if it's doable. Um, what I would recommend now, it, I know this is going to be getting long. Um, it's already 620. Um, looks like we have about 14, 15, what, 20 people in, in uh we currently have 27 attendees from the public. All right. I think what I'd like to do is go ahead and give them each, can we give them as, can we go as low as 30 seconds or is that, is that rude? <laughs> um, I think, I think if, if you want to dwindle it down, you can do a minute to two minutes. Um, I can do the timer. Also, why, don't we do, why don't we do a minute and see how we do. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, before we make, make a formal vote on a recommendation, I am going to go ahead and put in the public comments now. Um, I ask the public to be thoughtful, uh, to keep your remarks brief and on topic, um, but we appreciate your being here at this meeting and we do want to hear your voices. Um, so if, there's, if there aren't any other comments from commissioners or Art in Public Places members at this moment, I will turn it over to public comment period. And Ermini, if you want to just kind of run that, it looks like uh, you've already got someone's hand raised in the public uh, attendees. So let's go ahead and do that. Yes, if I could ask that you please raise your hand if you would like to make a comment or a question. Um, use the raise hand function now and I will start going on you, calling on you in order. Um, also for the record, if you will please state your full name and address as that will need to be part of your opening. Um, let me go ahead and we have uh, Luis Baca. I'm going to allow you to talk if you'll unmute yourself and you can begin your minute speaking. Good evening, commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is Luis Baca. I'm a ninth generation New Mexican. Very proud of my heritage. Um, I live at 4732 Loma Santa Fe, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I, I'd like to point out that the cons consultation with this group so late in this game uh, is yet another example of the mayor's feckless behavior. Uh, I, I'm sorry that you have to uh, do this in such a hurried manner. It's unfair. Uh, my question is, this seems to circumvent the chart process. Um, I know it's temporary, but it does not take into account what has been mandated to us and what some of us find is unfair. Uh, the third point I'd like to make is I've heard a lot of discussion about conflict and what happened when this monument was torn down so recklessly. I haven't heard a lot of comment about the brave men who risked their lives and died at the Battle of Valverde, protecting New Mexico and defending the Union. I'd like you to consider that and consider it heavily. Thank you so much, Mr. Baca. Appreciate your comments. And if anybody else would like to make public comment, if you don't want to give your address, if you could just state the city or something that you live in near something, just have to have it for a record. Um, I have no one else's hands up during this moment. I'm going to allow just one minute for people to get their hands up if they want to make public comment. If not, we will close public comment. Oh, there oh, we go. We're getting some hands. Okay. I'm going to allow Dr. Christina Castro to speak. Um, Ms. Dr. Castro, if you could please unmute yourself and you're free to speak. Hello, my uh, name is Dr. Christina M. Castro. I am calling uh, in from Olga Polge, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I am a Pueblo person. I am Jemez Pueblo and Taos Pueblo who resides in this city. And I find this whole dialogue totally offensive, dehumanizing and frankly, kind of disgusting that you would even be considering creating an adobe wall in the center of our plaza to brown wash what exists under that box. I'm appalled. I've expressed this over and over to the city that continuing to hide the truth or to attempt to whitewash it is disgusting and dehumanizing to indigenous people. Um, Angie Rizzo stated that we can't hide from the truth and this whole conversation is about hiding from the truth. 
Um, who's going to be commissioned to create this art? Are you going to pay them for the work of indigenous people? Are you going to pay them for the work that we did to remove that racist obelisk? And the mayor one year ago in June said that this was coming down. When is it going to come down? What's going to happen after a year? Um, and, and you're all still sitting around having discussions about how to beautify genocide? There is no honor in genocide. There will never be honor in genocide. Quit insulting us. This is insulting. This is insulting to public. Thank you. Dr. Castro, thank you so much. Your time is up. Armenia, thank you. Uh, Dr. Castro, thank you. We appreciate your, your comments. And I'm going to move on to Autumn Gomez. Autumn, if you want to unmute yourself, you are now allowed to speak. Good evening, Good evening. everybody. One moment. Good evening, everybody here. My name is Autumn Gomez. Can you just turn your computer? Uh, my name is Autumn Gomez. I'm a lifelong resident of Santa Fe, Ovacoga, New Mexico. Uh, I am a voting member of this resident of District 1. Um, so I'd like to apologize to all of you actually for being here because I really feel like this is not an arts issue. I feel like this is a city issue. I appreciate that uh, the commission members and the members of this conversation who would like to uplift the true history that is happening here in Ogapoga. And by true history, I mean everybody's true history, right? So like I said, again, this is my own opinion, but I believe that this is not an issue for you lovely people to be dealing with. This is something the city needs to be dealing with. And um, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gomez. Thank you, Ms. Gomez. I am going to move on to Carrie. Carrie, you are now allowed to speak. Oh, um, it says that you are using an older version of Zoom. I'm going to promote you to a panelist for just a moment so that you may speak. Give me just a second. Okay. Hi, Carrie, go ahead. Hi, my name's Carrie Kramer. Um, I vote in uh, District 3. And, you know, um, my comment is that unless this conversation is completely centering the voices of Indigenous folks in this territory, then I have really no interest in hearing what anyone else has to say about it. And that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. Let me... Don't know how to put you back, to be honest. There we go. Okay, um, I'm going to move on to Erica Garcia. Erica, you are now allowed to speak. Okay, hello, my name is Erica Garcia. Um, I'm a seventh generation uh, before New Mexico was a territory um, person of this land. And I find that I'm listening to um, a non-Indigenous centered idealism of how to create um, a cover, a mask of the plaza where um, I believe taking dirt, even I think it's just a, a slap in the face to talk about adobes taking the earth, the land, and we're talking about indigenous people and genocide, and we're creating an adobe idealism around the obelisk. I don't feel that the two are one and the same of healing or even creating a healing. I think it's um, a really in bad taste to, uh, to do something like that. And the idea that it is Santa Fe or New Mexican and it would look cool um, I'm not too sure what the point of the adobe is going to be um, in terms of beautifying genocide. And so I feel that um, however this is addressed, I feel that we should really take it back to um, removing this and putting something in place of telling a story of in a different way that doesn't, that's not genocide. So I, I don't know. Um, what the outcome of this meeting is, but what I hear, I do not agree with. And I really- Erica? Yeah. 
Erica, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I have to uh, follow the rule of the one minute for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Erica, for your comments. We appreciate them. I'm going to move on to Carrie Wood. Carrie, if you would unmute yourself, you are now allowed to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, Yate, my name is Carrie Wood. I live in Ogopove, Santa Fe, New Mexico. I will not be saying my address for my own safety. Um, as some people are aware, Indigenous people, specifically women, have been attacked for the last year because of this August still remaining up. And I feel like this is just going to put more target on us. And I want to reiterate what Autumn said is this is not you all's fault that you've been given this impossible task. And to me, a strong um, unifying um, message back to the mayor and the city would be, no, we're not going to try to beautify trauma. Like, we're not trying to make our trauma pretty, because this isn't just the past. This is ongoing, current day, people trying to dox us, and we're fearing for our safety. So I don't think you guys want that to be a part of that. And I would suggest you just send a message back to the city and say, this is not going to help anything, and this is going to make it worse. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carrie. We appreciate you. Thank you, Carrie. I'm going to move on to Amy Jo. Amy Jo, you are now allowed to speak if you'll unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Amy Jo Christian. I live in Santa Fe in um, uh, on out, off of West Alameda. Um, and I just wanted to say that I think, I just want to reiterate the importance of centering the indigenous voices that we've heard. I think to sum that up, I'm going to just repeat that it's not an arts issue. We cannot beautify genocide. And we need to stand with the indigenous people of this region. And I really urge the Arts Commission to not agree to be part of this attempt to beautify when what we all know needs to happen is we need to take away the obelisk completely so that we can begin the healing process. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you, Amy. I am going to move now to Katie, Katie Medley. Katie, you are now allowed to speak if you'll unmute yourself. See, she's unmuted. Katie, can you hear us? Okay, we will come back to Katie. Katie, I will come back to you. Oh, is Katie there? Katie might be there. Oh. Don't. I'm here, can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you. <laughs> Thank you, I was having a headphone problem. Thank you for your patience. No worries. My name is Katie Medley. I live in Santa Fe, over near Santa Fe High. I'm a white settler here. I've lived in the city since 2007, and I love it very much. Um, I would just like to reiterate the need to listen to the indigenous folks who are speaking on this issue. Um, ignoring indigenous voices and opinions is what got us in this position in the first place. Um, and I agree that any effort to mask or beautify that monument, which is really an open wound in the middle of the city, is going to deepen divides and cause uh, a lot of controversy and a, a lot of ugliness. Um, and I'd also recommend, you know, putting up a sign if you have to put something on it that says like, justice in progress, you know, we're, we're in process. Like it's okay to be pausing and growing and healing and to model that as a tourist destination, you can put justice and uh, meaning before, you know, beauty. And uh, I think that that could be really powerful and symbolic and strong on your part. Um, and I just don't think that the city needs any more walls, Adobe or not. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Katie. I am now going to be moving on to Selena. Selena, if you'll unmute yourself, you are now allowed to speak. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Selena Hokia. Um, I'm from Okia Winge, but I grew up in Ogepoga, New Mexico from when I was 12 up until adulthood. 
I attended the Santa Fe Indian School and IAIA. Um, and I just, I have a few comments. I just wanted, I was just wondering why aren't indigenous people at the center of this conversation? And why aren't indigenous people invited to this table? And I'm thinking about how our ancestors, our indigenous ancestors would have flipped this table over as they say. And I think we should remove the obelisk and talk about and showcase indigenous resiliency. Thank you. Thank you, Selena. Wow. Thank you, Selena. I am going to be moving on to Dawn. Dawn, if you'll unmute yourself, you are now allowed to speak. Hello, uh, hello, commissioners. Thank you so much for holding this meeting. Uh, my name is Dawn Furlong. I'm a white settler here in Santa Fe. I've been here 24 years. I love Santa Fe. I love the state. I love all the people. Um, I absolutely believe that we need to listen to the indigenous voices, that that needs to be center. Uh, I'm just, I'm just repeating what what uh what i agree with what i've heard and i just don't agree with any more walls you know no more walls no more windows looking into things i mean the obelisk needs to go i mean it's been you know a hundred and some years where where this is such a matter of the heart of of people um that were slaughtered here on the land so so yes um let's move forward you know let's move forward we don't need to encase something we need to move forward thank you don uh, that's, that's all i have thank you don and your kitty <laughs> and i will now be moving on to give me just a moment uh melissa melissa you are now allowed to speak Hi, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Hi, my name's Melissa Rose. I'm a resident of Ogopo, New Mexico as well. Um, I just want to also reiterate that uh, centering indigenous voices is important here because um, if you're not honoring the people of this land I, that, that built everything um, that the city profits off of, um, I, yeah, I just don't understand why why there's no self reflection in this city, in this in this council, and the people sitting here. That every bit of the aesthetic of indigenous people that you're profiting off of, that tourism profits off of, um, is disrespectful. And um, how how can you not center the uh, indigenous voices here when? It's just extraction. It's an extractive relationship and it's exploitive um, to not do that. And yeah, I think that's what I have to say. I think that you're listening to voices that um, are not residents of Santa Fe um, in, in this commission, in this whole process, actually. And I'm not blaming you all because uh, like people have said, it's not your job. Um, this whole process has not taught, has not, um, listen to the voices of indigenous citizens of, of Ogopoge. So um, I think that's what's missing here and I think that's important. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa. I will be going it on. It looks like we're, we may be repeating folks who want to chime in again, Armenia, which I'm not sure what the protocol is for that. Andrea, can, do you have any um, guidance for us on that part? Or chair, uh, I believe it is up to the chair if you would like to hear people again or if you'd like to close the time for public comment. I, I believe it is up to you. If you do want to hear people again, you could give them another minute to speak. If not, um, ask whether there are any other people who have not spoken that would like to speak, but it, but it is up to you how you'd like to run the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think, I think uh, we've heard some amazing comments and thoughtful comments from folks. And so I, I do want to close down the public comment period now. 
except let's go ahead and anyone else who has not spoken yet, please raise your hand if you've not spoken yet. We and do we have can. some that have uh, one that has not spoken yet, and that is April Holder. April, let's if you would unmute yourself, I will allow you to speak. Hello, um, my name is April Holder, and I'm um, a guest on um, Ogre Poge Land. And um, I just would like to say that um, as someone who spent many years um in um in this place in this um as a guest here as an indigenous person that is a guest here and been welcomed by my fellow indigenous people i'm very angered that they are constantly silenced harassed and i'm sorry but santa fe has made a lot of money a lot of profit off the blood of indigenous people and their suffering and to see this just discussed so casually by other people who don't understand the continuous trauma it is causing them is heartbreaking to say the least. Their voices need to be centered and their will should be what is done. Thank you. Thank you, April. Thank you, April. I'm going to be moving on to Kim. Kim. You are now allowed to speak. Thank you. If you'll unmute yourself. Hi, my name is Kim Griffiths and I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, Ogopoge. I am a guest on native land and I just want to uh, reiterate the call to center indigenous voices and extend my gratitude and thanks to all of the indigenous folks who have spoken up on this call. I think that it's super um, brave important and I'm grateful to hear their words as we consider what needs to be done. Let's not try to beautify genocide. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Looks like you got one more there. Yeah. There are two Autumns. I am so sorry, Autumn. I apologize. I will allow you to speak. It's different another Autumn. I am, okay. There is two Autumns. I am so sorry. <laughs> I will uh, unmute you now, and Autumn, you are able to speak. My apologies. No worry. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Autumn Billy. I was born and raised here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm also from two tribal Pueblo communities of Taos Pueblo and Acoma Pueblo. Um, I just want to share that in the late 1990s, uh, a mayor back then named Debbie Jaramillo once stated on the issue of place and architecture in downtown Santa Fe. Um, pertaining to Anglo-Americans settling in the West, Jaramillo stated that, and I quote, yeah, they came in and painted the town brown and moved the brown people out. Um, and I know that this is a commission full of different people of different backgrounds, but I just really want you to sit with those words and know that even non-natives have seen this happening for such a very long time, even before I was alive, that the purpose of brownwashing downtown Santa Fe is purely for tourist folks and not for the people that live here and reside here for as long as for in time immemorial, right? So just consider that when you're thinking about these pieces and all coming together and really figure out a way to have indigenous leadership involved in this as you move forward. But I just wanted to share that because that in terms of setting up brown walls and buildings has been happening mm -hmm. since and Autumn white people could Art. settle here in the West. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And I apologize earlier, but I have to Keep to the one. I just want to re I just want to reiterate because I see I know this this could go on all night. Um, we are just going to have one comment per person for one minute max. I do see some hands again that have, that have spoken already. We appreciate your comments a great deal. It's very informative and important to hear from you, but we can't obviously can't be meeting all night long. Um, so anybody that has not already spoken, go ahead and raise your hand, and Armenia can let you in. Um, to Hal Yoga, I will allow you to speak. If you can unmute yourself, you are now able to speak. Hi, my name is Elisha. I live on Ogepoge, and um, 
the comment I want to say is that I came in on a part where there was a statement to be as unbiased as possible. And the amount of bias I heard was so, so present. Um, and it is very clear that Indigenous voices need to be more represented and centered in this conversation. And I agree that um, this is not the group to do this work. And I'm sorry you all are put on this. And I want to reiterate that comment of saying no to doing this work. We're not here to beautify this space. And I want to read the other idea of slowing down and being intentional. This urgency and to cause and, and be a part of more trauma is, um, is even just causing more harm in our city. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Chair and Andrea, question for you. Um, there is somebody who is asking if they can give their minute to another person who has already spoke. Not yeah. sure on the rules on that. I would prefer. And to for that. Erica Garcia, if you have a family member who would like to speak um, that's separate from you, then yes, you can um, chime back in. And I'll, if you'll raise your hand again, I'll call on you. Oh, so there's someone on the same line, but a different person. Is that what we're yes. talking about? Okay, that's Correct. true. Yeah. Okay, so let me, sorry. It's a little bit of movement on my end. Um, Laura, Laura, it's your turn to speak. I will allow you to talk if you can unmute yourself. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Laura Olivas and I vote in District 1. I am a Mexican American that moved here in New Mexico about 17 years. And I do see, I do hear here, oh, I'm sorry, I hear in this meeting, a lot of just reiterating that, that just, just brown washing, using Adobe walls. But really we have to really consider the damage it's done and what needs to be done to heal. And I also agree with everybody or some other people here that you should, as a committee, just say no to this, trying to beautify a wound. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Erica? And I'll just say, I think after, uh, unless you have your hand raised now, uh, anybody that wants to speak, be sure that your hand is raised now because we're gonna close this down on the next, uh, after these last two people speak. Ian, um, I know I've mentioned not to use the chat function, but I'm breaking my own rule hook. Ian, if you want to speak, please raise your hand. Okay, Erica, you are now allowed to speak if you'll unmute. Um, okay, my name is Sadie Hokia. I am 12, I will be going to the Santa Fe Indian School. I am breaking trauma cycles of my people on the Adobe. Oh. And, the Ado and Adobe does not mean justice. Adobe does not cover the harm done to my people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh. It looks like we have one more person in Armenia and then we can close it down. So Sadie, Sadie Jade will be the last person to speak. Sadie, you are now allowed to speak if you will unmute. <laughs> Oh, Sadie was having a little technical difficulty there, it looked like. Um, Sadie, are you able to join us? It looks like she got kicked off, unfortunately. Um, oh, I think maybe she was speaking there for Erica. So I think we'll go ahead and close down public comment period. Thank you everyone for commenting. We appreciate your input and your thoughtfulness around these issues. Um, I, I would like to make a comment myself which is um, this group, both the Arts Commission and Art and Public Places, in my experience, is an incredibly diverse, thoughtful group representing many, many aspects of our community. And so I just want to thank them again for their service. I know that these uh, situations aren't easy um, and we're, we're delving into complex issues, but I just want to thank you all for continuing to be on this Zoom, nearly approaching a two hour mark and uh, how much we appreciate you. Um, I would also like to say that um, to reiterate for the public, because um, I think there's 
some confusion um, that we are not trying to appropriate the chart process. Uh, I think it's fairly clear that the chart process has its work cut out for it. Um, and that we are simply trying to make a recommendation or not make a recommendation about a temporary uh, use or temporary measure to deal with the box, which um, I think most people do not care for uh, of any persuasion. So with that said, I'd love to hear from everyone, anyone here, Art and Public Places and Arts Commission, if you would still like to make a recommendation, um, and if you would like to make a recommendation, what recommendation you would like to make? Uh, Alex, I, I, uh, I need to ask a question and then to share something. I have something of interest for the commissioners and uh, Pauline may know this already, but uh, can we do a, like a mini, um, what do you call it, executive session? I would be more than, it wouldn't be more than two minutes what I have to say, but I don't feel comfortable um, saying it to other people outside of the commission. And of course, Andrea Salazar, because she's our attorney, but um, could that happen? Because uh, before we close down. Uh, and to be clear, Exilda, are you comfortable with the Art and Public Places Committee members being part of that executive? Uh, or I'm, just Arts Commission? I think just Arts Commission, since since this is uh, sort of our area. Pauline, what are your thoughts on, on that? Sorry, Chair, I, I'm gonna Sorry, jump go in. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, so we did not notice an executive session. An executive session, unfortunately, has to be for one of the different topics allowed under the Open Meetings Act. And so we don't have that kind of put out into our agenda. So I do not believe we could go into it in an executive session. I apologize, Exilda. No, thank you for the clarification. Oh, okay. Exilda, do you, would you recommend tabling this discussion to have a separate meeting or, or what are your thoughts? What are your concerns? Uh, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, I, I, I hate to, you know, schedule another meeting. We, this is a long, has been a long process. Yeah. I just want to say this, maybe it's already going to be published or noticed that um, uh, the uh, chart process has been, uh, the contract has been given, been given to Artful Life and my daughter, Valerie Martinez, is the founder and the chief officer of Artful Life. And so um, I believe that um, you, you all need to know that. And um, since she is my daughter, I don't know if there's any conflict at all, but we'll go forward with that. And maybe Andrea, you would give us uh, your opinion of that. Um, she is uh, now in the process of meeting with the city officials. And, um, and so she will lead that process along with other people. And so I might not have a, too much of a voice going forward if, if we are still gonna be part of this process. And Exilda, I'm gonna jump in here as one of the reviewers who participated in the chart review process this is all still confidential information because it hasn't gone through procurement with the city so i don't think that we really are at will to talk about that yet and i will leave that in pauline and the city's able hands but i think this is i think that's confidential still thank you for that adelma and i think regardless i don't think that should affect this process since we're not really directly impacting chart we're we're being asked to do a temporary measure so i don't I don't see that as a conflict for this particular recommendation, but yes, and my understanding too is that this is also confidential. Um, any other thoughts about uh, where we wanna go with this process? I have no problem with calling it a night and saying we're gonna follow back up. I have no problem with um, talking again about some simple recommendations. Um, that we could make. I, I agree with Adelma's earlier point that anything too complex obviously is, is a, a too tough for us to handle in this, in this short time frame. 
Um, but I'm open, op open the floor again to anyone else who wants to, to talk about that. I just think that we've had an opportunity here from public and we've heard profound, significant, and really important feedback. And I think we need time to digest that, even apart from that we're at two hours. It's not about time in linear time. It's about receiving, um, receiving a lot of important feedback. So I would make the recommendation that we schedule another meeting, um, if possible, so that we can have time as commissioners and art and public places to um, synthesize and consider um, all that we've learned tonight. I agree. Uh, so, okay, so I'm just gonna take that as a, I'm gonna take that as a motion from Adelma and I'm gonna take it as a second from Exilda, unless anyone, does anyone else have a comment on that? in which case I will vote on us tabling and rescheduling a follow-up meeting. Do I have any, yeah, Alma, go Graham, ahead. Sorry, Andrea, oh, yeah. do we need a formal motion and second? Yes, please. Can okay, we have- Adelma, a do you, Adelma, do you wanna make that a formal motion? I motion that we as Arts Commission and Art in Public Places Committee um, request another forthcoming special meeting to continue to talk about this process. And do I have a second? Exilda, do you want to go ahead and second that? Yeah, I, I second the motion. And shall we have some comment on that? Alma, do you want to make a comment on this? Go ahead. No, my quick comment will just be thank you to everybody who spoke. Um, that was exactly what I was looking for in terms of a little bit more support and guidance. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Alma. Anyone else? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, thank all the public for their comments as well. I definitely believe that we need to have more public input on this, you know, as people have said, indigenous voices, but also thinking about the other person's comment, you know, how do we honor the soldiers and that dialogue of both, you know, this, this monument has multiple layers and sides to it. And how do we um, resolve that? And I think by including more voices, and I really appreciate what the little young boy said about, you know, Adobe, um, doesn't mean justice, you know, and um, thank you for saying that to us and, and providing all of this feedback because I was really um, curious and, and wanting to know more about like, what does the public think? What does Santa Feans think? What do the indigenous people here, Pueblos think? Um, Navajos, Apaches, Hispanics, you know, it involves a lot of people here. And I know uh, a lot of us on this, um, the Art and Public Places Committee and commissioners um, you know, may, might not have grown up here, such as myself, but I'm definitely open to dialogue and, and trying to figure this out for, for everyone. So thank you again to all the public for your comments. Thank I you. have something to say as well. I, I, also wanted to, I also wanted to thank the public for bringing up all of these really important um, issues and, and things that, that make us um, really, really think hard about, um, even if this is a, you know, temporary fix, what, what concerns are in the community. And it's, it's so incredibly important. And I want to thank you all for um, reminding us um, about um, what is important to the community and, and how we need to move forward. So um, I really appreciate it, and I thank you, and um, and thank you for um, for being a part of this this process. Great. Anyone else? Any other comments before we the arts commissioners will vote on the motion to reconvene? Uh, I, I think we need need to do it in a timely fashion, but I do think everyone here needs a moment to process um, this process. Um, any other comments before we vote on that? All right, let's go ahead and do a roll call, Armenia, on the motion. Thank you. Alex Hanna? Yes. Alma Castro? Yes. Exilda Trujillo de Martinez? Yes. Andrea Hanley? Yes. Adelma Hinosco? Yes. Tamara Bates? Yes. Jorge Bernal? Yes. And that motion carries. Okay, thank you. It looks like we get another emergency meeting. Um, <laughs>
which was going to be the what was going to be my closing anyway that we need more meetings so there we have it so um if there aren't any other any other matters before the arts commission or art in public places do we have any other matters we want to discuss this evening i think we're all pretty tired i'm getting hungry um if not I would like, I would say we should adjourn and I will follow up with Pauline uh, to get us scheduled. I think it's likely it may, and we can have a discussion about this. I think it's likely that that meeting will be an Arts Commission only meeting, but I just want to reiterate how much I appreciate Art in Public Place's role and input this evening. You guys have been amazing. Um, and so if there, if there aren't any other matters, I'll ask that we adjourn the meeting. Are there any other matters we want to discuss this evening? All right, thank you, we're adjourned. Thank you for your time and commitment.